Okay. Hey there, guys, gals, everyone in between. We're back with control. It's been difficult this last while, but it's fine. Things aren't quite as sorted out as I want them to be, and this might be my last bigger title that I will be playing recording-wise, because, yeah, my my PC doesn't really like them when I record them because my graphics card is an asshole. But I found out the hard way that apparently it's fine with me streaming them, so... Bigger AAA titles until I get an upgrade will probably be streamed, so you guys have the VODs that you can look at. But until then, I will finish this one. Let's see. How do I get to the Panopticon? Best travel. Okay, I'm in Central Executive. Oh. Wait, do I have to talk to someone in Central Executive? Yeah, I didn't check. Oh my god. Nope, it's okay. I'm leaving. Hi. Panopticon, Panopticon, Panopticon. How do I get there? Panopticon? No. Artworks? Furnace? Janitor's office? Research? Parapsychol? Uh. Productive studies? Ritual? Oh, what about luck and probability? Let's go there. Cuz I think uh there's something I can do there? Maybe. The ominous music. All right. Um All right. Luck. Because I think I can actually do something here. Now that I have a card, do I have a card that can let me in here? Aha! Alright. So. Oh. What does that be? Wait a minute. Is there anything that will explain to me what this is all about? Okay. Lucky item manifest. Bronze koi fish China attracts a abundance of and wealth. Feng Shui. Horseshoe Ireland. Wards off evil. Orientation important. Heals up allows luck to be kept. Heals down luck flows upward. Maneki Neko Japan. Beckoning cat used in shops. Or held up to beckon customers creating luck for the business owner. Four leaf clover. Ireland. Shamrock. Rare plant variation. Connections to druidic health rituals. Elephant, China, protection, good luck, wisdom, feng shui, light bulb, various, documented gambling rituals indicate luck is produced when all lights in the room are turned on. Note, effects of items to be tested, consider investigation, investigating the upper orientation of the horseshoe. Also consider positioning of feng shui objects. Proximity of luck items may influence luck readings. Okay. Mission. Oh, find my brother Dylan, on track. Okay. Collectibles? Oh, hotline. I think I've already watched these, didn't I? Astral constructs. Did we watch this already? Certain resources or loot can be constructed or crafted into mods or forms. We advocate and facilitate this at control points or menus. This will only be available or exclusive to the director. Okay. Interesting. So, wait a minute. The fish is... Good luck in two feet. Okay, you know what? Let's turn all the lights on since that seems to be a thing. If I can't figure this out now, well, shit happens. I'm not gonna spend my whole time trying to get it to work. I'm so curious what this is all about. Okay. 
So, all lights are on. Yes. This one on? No, it's on. This one on? Okay. I can't really see if that's on or off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh! Uh... Nope, not what I wanted. Nope. There we go. Oh, look. Little plant. Huh, so I can't pick up the horseshoe? Oh, this horseshoe. Oh, okay. Let's leave that that way. Take the floor leaf clover. And fish. Fish has to be within two feet of it. Nope. Nope. Come here, fishy. Okay. Seven. Um. Wait, where do I put the four leaf clover, by the way? Ah, oh, okay, there we go. And I feel like the cat will be another one. Cat. Out there anymore, but okay. Let's see what it gives with me for me with the elephant. Oh, these little things. Okay. Uh. Yeah, like I said, if this doesn't work, it's fine. I'll just try it a different time. <laughs> what is happening? Okay, that was pretty interesting. Just for the hell of it, I want to do that again. <laughs> okay. So weird things tend to happen. <laughs> Alright, I'll do that a different time. Because I really just want to continue the story. Ritual division? Wait a minute. Uh, pff, not what I want to tap. There we go. I have no idea where I'm supposed to go. Research? Probable lack of probability? Uh... You know, let's go back to that control point and just move on to the farthest one. Towards that black space over there. Yo, mine, boy! Not entirely sure what you were trying to get there, buddy, but I'm not trusting you. Ah! Oh, boy. Whoa. Nope. I don't like you at all, sir. Boy. No, 
that's just towards the bathroom. I want to go... Huh? Wait a minute. Parapsychology? No. You know what? Before I get sidetracked, let's just go to the damn control point. It's so much easier. Ooh, well, now I know what middle mouse button does. Astral. Astral exhibition. Huh. I really kind of feel lost, actually. This place is huge. I mean, legit, this is just fucking big. Um, control research? No, that's not up there. Uh. Okay, so I have to go this way anyway. Okay. Didn't I get this one? An early hypothesis was that the mice get Yeah, I think I already have that one. Okay, so I already have this thing locked up and safe in a way. Now this is literally just going to be me running around trying to find out where I have to go. Well, feeling questions been running around, found Darling's office. <laughs> Alright, so let's do some reading. Because I literally don't know where the fuck I'm going. The Bureau has spent years studying why objects of power transport users into the astral plane when touched. My predecessor, Dr. Ash, theorized that a potential receptacle, determined by Jungian archetypes and the collective subconscious, would be inhabited by paranatural energies when an AWE occurred in its vicinity, creating an altered item. Over time, a link was created by the blank and the astral plane to that item, making it an object of power. So many additional theories have been raised since Dr. Ash's time. Objects of power were placed on Earth as tests by some astral entity. Our dimension was once part of the astral plane, and the objects were left behind as its borders recede. The astral plane was an early threshold of the oldest house, but the connection was severed and now the two are linked solely through objects of power. I will attempt to disprove some of these in order to thin the herd. Hopefully the truth will emerge. Interesting. Collectibles. Multimedia. Uh, unread? Ah, oh, it's the one we just heard from him as we came in. I've been fielding questions recently regarding HRAs. What are they for? Do you always need to wear them? And what's the deal with the headroom resonance anyway? I... Oh. Fuck. Uh, that's not very professional, Doctor. Despite what you may have heard, HRAs are not monitoring devices. We're not tracking your movements. We're listening to your conversations while you're wearing them. <laughs> we do that regardless whether or not you're wearing an HRA. Think of them as a, as a uh, life preserver. Only instead of water, the, the thing HRAs protect you from is um, classified. One day that classified, not water, might pour in and you'll be glad you got, a, got an HRA keeping you afloat. And if you don't have an HRA, don't worry. It'll be... Uh, Quick and painless. <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. We're making more. Tim, he looks like he's been through hell. Wonder what happened. 
there anything else in here? Oh, hi. What's oh, the deal you with as well. Jesus, everything just dropped by picking that up. Dear Dr. Darling, I, expect, I suspect my colleague Dr. Harrington has already contacted you for contacted you asking for an increase in her department's budget. I'm not surprised. Parapsychology has always been the squeaky wheel, all fuss but no results. Parakinesiology has always been the stronger department. More breakthroughs, more tangible data, more usable research. I'm sure a man of your esteem can plainly see which department is more deserving of the budget increase. Just think what those additional resources could do for an already formidable research team. Anyway, I know you're a fan of single malt, so I left a bottle of well-aged brown on your desk. Yours in admiration, Dr. Lewis. You shady little bitch. Oh, here's another one. Sure. Resonance. It's there. We can't see it. It vibrates around us, through us, from us. But what if the vibration is conscious? What could a force like that do? Blank, open a door to a blank I've called blank. The blank emits a force that is far beyond the forces we've previously dealt with. It has shown me so much that I have to wonder. Is resonance the key element in all altered phenomenon? AWEs, altered items, objects of power, do they share a common blank that we've yet to discover? We can harmonize control points. What else would the correct frequency allow us to achieve? What if the resonance has, resonance has been the answer this whole time? Refer to file blank for full report. Despite what you may have heard. Okay. That's a lot of stuff to read, yo. Um. Dr. Darling is insistent that certain objects of power share direct connection to the blank, an entity or group of entities that we have little information on, or little that I am allowed to access. In his written reports he states that there is a clear link between these objects of power, the blank, the astral plane, and the oldest house itself, probably the council. His work supposes these links are innate, a fact ingrained into the very blank of objects such as the hotline or the service weapon. But what if these particular objects were never linked to the blank, but had that connection forced upon them? Isn't it strange no other objects of power require such direct contact with the blank? Isn't it strange that using the service weapon or the hotline will re result in grievous harm or even death if the user is not the director, or at least worthy of the role? Why do we assume this involvement by the blank is a natural fact and not something more blank? Okay. I can understand why they want to be secretive and sketchy about things, but damn all those cutouts. And now it's back to trying to find the Panopticon. <laughs> Wish me luck. Well, there might be some light at the end of the tunnel. I don't think I've been in here before. Uh oh. That doesn't sound good. Is that good? Is that okay? Wow, I actually forgot how cool this looks. Hmm. You never pass through. Dimensional research. Every measures. Oh. Okay. Um. G. Hotline. Ashtray maze. I'm averse to using objects of power. I don't want to lean on things I ultimately can't trust. But the ashtray and the cigarette, smoking there forever, have their uses. The ashtray maze they conjure is an impossibly changing labyrinth that no one but the binder, and those the binder invites, can ever pass through. The things we hid in dimensional research, the things Darling studies, the danger and the risk involved, call for every measure of security and protection I could bring to the table. The maze, hands down, is our strongest lock. I gave Darling and his chosen crew license to pass through the maze. Lately, I've started to think I should revoke that license. Uh, 
Okay, I'm kind of curious. Now that he's dead and I'm the director, who is it bound to? Is it bound to anyone even? Can I even move through here? Oh, it's just that closet behind me. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Hold on a minute. Where are you taking me? Huh? It just went in a big circle. In a really weird circle. Okay. Okay, so I can't pass through the ashtray maze just yet. Oh. Thank you. I don't really want that. I keep forgetting M in this game is not... Well, it looks like... <sighs> Wrong button. Looks like I'm back to trying to figure out where the hell I'm supposed to go, but at least I found the ashtray maze. Or did I find that before? I literally cannot remember. It's been so long. God. Things that happen when life happens. Jesus, it's, it's a mess. Yeah, thank you for alerting the whole world to my presence. I really appreciate it. Oh, Christ. Okay. So I'm still looking for a way to get to the Panopticon. Can I get through there? Through... Uh, Power plant? Ow! Come on! Right. Okay, can you stop spawning? Wow. <laughs> oh, there's so many of them spawning right now. Go away. Thank you. Is that all of them? Okay, cool. I'm fine with that being all of them. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go to the elevator. At least it's here. Go back to Central Executive, or can I go through? Go to through here from the elevator. Huh. Maintenance sector. Access containment sector. There we go. Oh, great! I should have just taken the elevator from the fucking beginning. Yay! I'm a doofus. But we already knew that, didn't we? Sector. Panopticon. Altered items. Hmm. Maximum security prison. Dangerous. No, that doesn't sound ominous at all. Thank you for that. The containment sector, the Panopticon is home to the altered items we find and contain. It is a maximum security prison. It's a vault for the most valuable treasures on Earth. It's a powder keg big enough to blow this world to dust. A temple, a place of worship filled with idols and angry gods. It's all of these, and none of them. It's something more profound, unbelievable unknowable something worse altered items we found many they appear mundane but nothing could be further from the truth they are all powerful dangerous they press heavy on our minds because that's their nature they've been altered because we can't stop thinking about them 
put them on altars because they're used to being worshipped. This keeps them calm. We contain them, but they don't want to be controlled. We study them to discover what makes them tick. If this place were ever breached, it would be chaos of biblical proportions. Okay, that doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. Putting all these things that can potentially kill everything and everyone in one place. Yeah, no, that's perfectly fine. Let's do it again. Oh. Goody box! I got goodies! And that's a very bright fucking light. Oh, fabulous. More of these little assets. Wait, can they fly? Can I hit something? Uh oh. Well, that works. Ow! Stop shooting me with shit. <laughs> Yeesh! Yikes! Ow! Hey, come here. I could use you. Uh oh. Thank you. Ugh. Oh boy. Oh great. I just put myself in a corner. Yep. <laughs> I need to get better at the combat in this game. I'm terrible. Eh, that's nothing new. What the? You know, I'm kind of curious. Like, for instance, um... The hiss is red, right? So when you're loading, it shows you Polaris. But if you die and you reload from a save, it shows you... The red screen like it would for, say, the hiss. Just something I got in mind about that. I could be wrong, he's just there for shits and giggles, or whatever. Whoa! Oh boy! Can I take you over, please? Thank you. Not what I actually wanted. There's there's a rocket bitch somewhere around here. Thank you. bidding now. Okay. Uh oh. Eh. I think that was anyway the last one. Not the end of the world. 
Okay, anything around here that you saw? Pick up? Nope, not really. Alright, reading time! While altered items and objects of power may seem similar at first, it's important to note some very key distinctions. Firstly, objects of power's power grant paritalitarian abilities. See the file PUT-812 for an introduction to the subject. Uh, secondly, objects of power translocate anyone who makes physical contact to the astral plane. This is widely be believed to be due to the blanks affili affiliation with objects of power. Not every individual is allowed to the, in the astral plane, which indicates the blank evaluates who can or cannot enter. Thirdly, and this is not always the case, objects of power are much more paranaturally blank than altered items. Looking at the specific criteria that defines an object of power... Oh god, sorry. Object of power, it is no wonder they are notably rarer than altered items. In fact, we have blank altered items for every object of power contained within the Bureau. Interesting. Very interesting. So... Go upstairs? That's probably just the offices and the like. But there may be goodies! They like hiding goodies. I want goodies. Or... Sure, let's listen to this. Reminder. This week, any documents that suddenly appear pink, light red, or any shade in between must be incinerated immediately. Okay. Failure to do so will result in termination and possible bodily harm. Thank you for your attention. Uh, okay. You know, this place seems really exciting to work for, but, uh, I'll rather not. I kind of like the idea of being alive. Anyone in here? Nope. Hallelujah. More goodies? Logistics and security. Logistics and security. Anything over here? Nope, nothing over there. Okay, so I guess I'm going to logistics and security. Oh god. Okay. Just no. Oh my god, my heart. Uh. I still think this is one of the coolest parts of the game is where the whole building like shifts back into what it's supposed to look like. So cool as hell. So... Panopticon? Wait, didn't it say here? Uh, so there we go. Security and Panopticon. Let's first look around a little bit. Oh, well, can't run into that. Ooh, door. Oh, where does this go? Oh, is this a whole new area? Wait a minute. Where am I now? Oh, shit. This all goes to completely different zones. Well, you know what? For now, I know this is a really short episode, but... Huh? I... Kinda, I know this sounds bad, but I just have too much going on, so I just ah! ask a little bit of tender love and care and some patience. I'm sorry for it being super short. 
I just still have a lot going on. But I am streaming a lot more if anyone wants to come and hang out with me. Because I do that. Play games horribly live. Is that everyone? Yeah. So, yeah, but I will resume recording again. Things are a little more settled and evened out. Only thing that can stop me is very bad weather. That's what happened yesterday. So I do hope that despite the short episode... Yeah. I hope you had fun watching. And yeah, I'm back. I've returned. I'll be doing content more regularly. I'll be doing live streaming more regularly. I hope you'll join me for that. And I'll see you all next time.